We're back on fantasy football today and just going to take a look at a recent draft we did for some reference there. Dave probably has it because he like has memorized these drafts. But uh, Zach Moss and Zamir White are two running backs for Dave that are breakout candidates. And Zach Moss went late round seven in this draft I'm looking at that we did a few weeks ago. And Zamir White went three picks later. So uh, what do you think about Are they that close, Zach Moss and Zamir White? They are for now, and things can obviously change, especially in Las Vegas. All it takes is one draft pick within the first 100 picks of a running back by the Raiders, and Zamir White goes off this list with the quickness. But I do think Zach Moss has a chance to exceed his numbers from last year. Last year was a career best for Zach Moss, almost 1,000 total yards and seven touchdowns. I think that was the number for Moss in 2022, or 23 rather, excuse me. And we've already talked. As soon as Moss went to Cincinnati and Joe Mixon was out of there, we talked about how Zach Moss, a better version of Joe Mixon, better yards per carry, more explosive, better yards after contact per carry. Like all the things that you look for from a running back, those metrics were good. And so all he has to do is fend off Chase Brown taking over more than the third down role, and he'll be in the exact same spot that Joe Mixon has been in for the last four years. And Mixon has averaged at least 15 PPR points per game in that spot. I think Moss could do almost exactly that, like right around 15 PPR points, maybe closer to 14 if he has that role. And that's the if is, well, there's two ifs. There's the can he stay healthy if, and can he keep that role and make sure that Chase Brown doesn't take too much away. But the situation is good. The offensive line should be good enough. And the receivers, assuming T. Higgins stays, We'll keep the safeties playing back. It, it just all makes sense for Zach Moss to have his best year ever. I, I am a lot more excited right now today about, like, I agree with Dave that if the Raiders take a running back with a top 100 pick, then Zamir White takes a big hit. But right now I'm quite a bit more excited about Zamir White than I am Zach Moss, okay. just because there's so much less competition. Um, and he was with this coaching staff towards the end of the year last year when Josh Jacobs went down and they just fed him. And I think this is a team that would love to run the ball 30 or 35 times a game and let their defense wins that win them games. So Zamir White stays healthy and they don't use a top 100 pick. He might be in the top five in the NFL in rush attempts this year. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't know if he'll get that high uh, in, in rush attempts, but top 10, I think, is certainly within the range of possibilities. Uh, but obviously, like you said, he, he, he was he was fed quite a bit. So I guess there is the potential for that. But uh Moss at his cost right now is fine. I just I'm so worried about him just being a flash in the pan of the five games that we saw last year. And you go back to his time in Buffalo when he was given this opportunity. He was basically the guy that the Bills tried to make their starter. And every time he flopped, whether it was due to injury or poor play, and it was on what was supposed to be a great offense. And it was the same type of system. We talked about this quite a bit about running out of shotgun and how much this is a similar system to what he was in in Buffalo and in Indianapolis. And so Again, round seven is hard to you know overlook what he can become, and and it could just be a, a five game sample size of him staying healthy and being productive and doing all those things before either he gets hurt or Chase Brown maybe takes over. It could be Travion Williams, or they may still add somebody as well because none of these guys have you know at least long term deals. Chase Brown's not his rookie deal, but um, I I think from the standpoint of who has more upside for me, it's Mir White, um, and Moss is somebody that unless it's probably after round six, I will be avoiding just because I I, I really fear the potential of him flopping in this opportunity. And so if let's just say that you're in a draft and you end up with Zach Moss and you have that fear of him flopping, Chase Brown went in round nine in our most recent full PPR mock. You could take him in round eight if you want to. You could lock up the Bengals backfield with back-to-back picks after 80th overall. That doesn't sound so bad. I probably would rather have somebody in the Moss pick and then just take Chase Brown. You could do that too. So Mm. who's picked around Moss? Uh, Zamir White. So you, as of now, Zamir White and Chase Brown would be your preference, one hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. So. I don't hate it. Yeah, Moss. I I just I will point out he also had four games at the end of the twenty twenty two season where he did fine. He didn't score a ton of fantasy points because he didn't score in except one of them. Um, and that does kind of like if you look at his career, he doesn't catch a lot of passes. I, I hope that changes. I also think that the situation in Indianapolis was much better for rushing efficiency than it is in Cincinnati. Well, why? He wasn't really with Richardson that much. Well, he wasn't even with him in week one. That was one. He of wasn't them. with him in week one. I just don't think that the Bengals have a good run blocking 
offensive line or system. No, but they face but much better talent around him, though. They face light boxes. This is one of the biggest knocks on Joe Mixon. He had one of the most advantageous rushing situations. Always a light box, one of the highest but, light box rates, and he was terrible. He just couldn't do. They anything. didn't have an offensive line that could block a light box. I, I mean, did the Colts have like some great offensive line? I I, I don't know that they used to. Last year, Moss's eight in the box rate was fourteen point eight percent. Mixon's was fifteen point two percent. Both of those were very low. So I, I feel like it's but Moss's was lower than Mixon's. Yeah, by I mean he was a lot better. Was he better than Mixon? I mean, he was, but that's better. not the reason why. It's not because of the both of them were below three yards per carry against eight in the box too. All right, if you want, let's just see. I, I don't know the stats here. So run block win rate, the Bengals according to ESPN were ninth best. The Colts were eleventh. So it looks like they had fairly similar situations. Now PFF does not grade the Colts, the Bengals offensive line well. Right, I say by that one, there's there's a lot of different offensive line uh, measurements right now, and they don't align very well. Yeah, That's, I'm very suspicious. Same, same. Okay, uh, let's go to the rest of Dave's breakouts list: Chris Olave, Jaden Reed, and JSN. Olave obviously going to get drafted much earlier. Do you think Chris Olave justifies a second round pick, Dave? He almost does by default because he's one of these young receivers with huge upside. And if you just drill down into the 11 games last year, he had at least seven targets. He actually had at least eight targets in those games. It's 17.1 PPR points per game. It could be just as simple as saying, okay, New Orleans doesn't make a big splash in their receiving core. They don't try and, and lean on the run as much as they did last year. Maybe they don't have Taysom Hill and, and that doesn't harpoon half the offense. And Derek Carr stays healthy. Olave could end up having his best year in his third year. And to me, it's just it's just the guy who's got supreme talent, continuing to get opportunities and putting it all together with his quarterback. Uh, Heath, I don't think you're on this one. No, and I, I I like the talent. It's just with London and with Garrett Wilson, it's very easy to look at the situations and see, look, these are elite wide receivers and look how much better the situation got for them. We're finally going to get elite production. With Chris Olave, it seems like it's the exact same situation he's been in his entire career, which is fine. I think he's a, he's a low end number two. And he, I, I am kind of surprised that, that Dave likes him because he's, he was really hit or miss last year. Like he had a lot of games. You mentioned the games where he had more than seven targets, and he was awesome in those games. But he also had a lot of games with like 45 yards. Um, and so I, I think you're going to continue to have those in this mediocre Saints offense. See, that's the one thing, though, that I'm curious about, is the addition of Clint Kubiak going yes. to make things that much better for everybody. And clearly a lot falls on Derek Carr. And we know how he feels about Derek Carr, um, right. so we'll, we'll see. We'll see how things go go there in in terms of the quarterback play. Uh, but I do think a change in in play caller matters here. And and what we've seen from these San Francisco guys, and that's where Kubiak is coming from. And obviously, he has his father's pedigree as well. Is the the ability to get these guys out in space and and make plays after the catch, yards after catch. And Olave now, you know, for what it's worth, I know Michael Thomas has missed a ton of time, but this this is a, a receiving core that's. Missing guys, you know, I'll go back to what Dennis Allen said at the owners meetings in, in, in the takeaway we had in that they're looking to add a pass catcher, not necessarily a wide receiver. So does that mean a tight end? Does that mean another pass catching running back or does it mean another wide receiver? And so right now they're starting wide receivers. You know, the top three guys are Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid and, and Cedric Wilson. You know, so it's a it's a pretty clear path to him dominating targets if he plays the way he's capable of playing. So. I do think that there is a chance for a guy going into year three, you know, who's shown some some very impressive flashes to take that step forward. But you are, again, asking Derek Carr at this point in his career to do that. And that's really, I think, the only drawback. But, you know, you look at where these San Francisco guys have gone, you know, and again, I'll reference Nico Collins. Year three, he goes to a situation where they just open up the offense. And and hopefully the same thing happens with, you know, Kubiak's system. So I'm excited about a lot of it. I, I do think, you know – and we spent some time talking about it. it feels like you're settling for him in round two because of what he's done, you know, and it's people like us that continue to prop him up to whatever degree, you know, based on talent or, or opportunity or all these things. But at some point, if it does click, you're going to be pretty thrilled about what he can become. And I think this is the year that's going to happen. Yeah. By the way, I just want to comment on something. Someone wrote in the comments uh, that they like Jamie's breakout list a little better than Dave's, but I just want to point out yeah, again, Dave, Dave, <laughs> no, Dave, 
he gave different names. He said he agreed with a lot of what was yes. on Jamie's list. Jamie responded first, so Dave was just giving some kind of deeper and names. I, I just I just gave a list that included Jamie's guys, so I yeah. I didn't didn't did not care. Right, no, and no. the whole point of this is just to come up with candidates anyway. So and we, not, it's uh, not like I'm saying, oh, Garrett Wilson's gonna suck. He's not a breakout. It's it's not that. It's just these are guys. These are talking points of players that could have a career. I can't and, believe and, you and, like Zach Moss more than Bijan Robinson. I know. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and and for. For Don't uh, anybody that wants more of this, I, I'm, I'm writing the first version of Sleepers Breakouts and Busts this week. So Sleepers are on the site already. Breakouts will be on by the end of the day today and bust tomorrow. All right. Olave, I just want to point something out with Olave. He has been, among wide receivers, 16th in yards per game, both of his NFL seasons. So that's with, you know, one one year, his rookie year, a really – Bad. I'm. I'm just gonna say, just on based on total numbers, that they didn't throw a lot. They they threw for hardly any yards. He was 16th in yards per game. Last year they threw a lot more. They weren't as efficient, but they threw a lot more. They had more yards. He was 16th in yards per game. Uh, that's better than Garrett Wilson's been. That's better than Drake London's been. But at least it tells you that he's got a path to being a top 15 receiver. At, at worst, you know, but he just doesn't score touchdowns. And he so far it reminds me a lot of Terry McLaurin. Chris Olave does not get red zone targets. He does not get green zone targets. I don't really know how to project that, but so far through two seasons, he has something like 20 red zone targets uh, in two seasons. That's terrible. So, well, and, that and again, going be- back to the car situation, it's hard to expect a big change in the touchdown numbers playing with a quarterback who's only thrown more than 28 touchdown passes once in his career. Like you're asking him to have 40% of his team's receiving touchdowns. We talked about this with DJ Moore when he used to never score more than four. Well, the team never threw more than 20. Um, yeah. if it, it's more difficult to have, like we could see Aaron Rodgers throw 35 touchdown passes, even if he's just mediocre in terms of everything else. Um, it's hard to expect that from the saints. Yeah. Just like eight touchdowns would be really good for a lot, but he has nine in two seasons. Uh, uh, you know, you, you brought up something early, Adam, which I think makes sense. You know, when you get past really the, AJ Brown, Puka, Wilson receiving, you know, line, you know, you want you want to call it that's where the the cutoff starts. Then it's that that mixed bag of guys, you know, with the the two older receivers which I think will be the, the only two. I guess you could throw Mike Evans in there. It's hard to discount what he's done. So, you know, Evans, Diggs and and Adams and the two 49ers guys. Uh for me Nico Collins, I think a lot of us probably feel the same way. Um and I and I'll, I'll put I'll put London in there, but that's kind of where Olave should belong. You know, he 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 sort of goes in that next group. You know, not necessarily should be in the in the first group, which is where he was being drafted last year, and that was a mistake. Okay. And Jaden Reed and JSN, Dave, are a couple of breakout candidates for you. Who do you like? JSN better? is kind of one of those shrug your shoulders guys and say, well, he can't be any worse than he was last year going into his second season in Seattle. Say that ten times fast. I, I I'm just I'm hoping that he can takes a lot of targets away from Lockett, a few away from DK, be a factor in the red zone, and be be finally worth the ADP because it's been nothing but projection ever since Seattle drafted him. Reed is someone that I fell in love with during the draft process. His last eight games, plenty of touchdowns still, 17.4 PPR points per game. His targets cratered in week 18 and then through the playoffs. I think he was playing hurt. And overall on the season, 13.6 PPR points per game. You've heard me talk about how Jordan Loves was a great quarterback and and really did well regardless of who was on the field. I think this is his best wide receiver. And Reed playing in the slot, not a high A dot, but someone who can make plays after the catch. I think he can come back and maybe flirt with 15 PPR points per game. And we're drafting him in our drafts kind of in the same range. He's going like the ADP overall in our PPR drafts is very similar between him and Christian Kirk and George Pickens and DeAndre Hopkins. And ultimately, I expect most of those guys to go ahead of Jaden Reed. I love the idea of trying to get Reed as my number three receiver. And if I have to settle for him as my number two, it might make me gross out a little bit. But it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up finishing as a top 24 type of wide receiver, if not top 20. 